What's up? It's Miho uh, here in the Bloodworks Live studio with Tate Tucker. How Yay. are you, man? I'm good. Happy to be here, man. Yeah, you brought the good weather. <sighs> I try to do that. I yeah. try to do that. It works like nine times out of ten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, you have an interesting upbringing. Both your parents are entertainers, kind of. And uh, I want to know, do they ever uh, like make you pursue the arts? Did they? Uh, how was that growing up? You know, like, yes and no. It was a super creative household, so it was kind of, it wasn't like a pressured thing. You mm -hmm. know, my sister was playing with clay since we were, like, three, and mm -hmm. it was just like, go do it. Throw your paint against the wall, babe. <laughs> we went to, like, alternative Montessori schools. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of, like, inevitable. We did choirs and things like that, mm -hmm. but I was never, like, the creative in the family. Was that because, like, they're kind of from the Midwest, and they, ha they had strange upbringings? Yes. Um, that I researched? Yeah. So were they more, like... Just do what you can, just explore your mind. Yeah, like my mom basically ran away from home when mm -hmm. she was like 17. And my dad pretty much did the same thing, mm -hmm. like went straight to the Air Force out of Detroit. So I think they wanted to give us just a choice to, to define who we were and and just start fresh as parents, you know? Yeah, for sure. Pretty much. Um, you ended up going to Georgetown and you took a class with Michael Eric Dyson. Yep. Um, which is kind of where you got your start. Yeah, you uh, freestyled out. for Lupe there. You ended up taking the class. Yep. Did he influence you in any way? Um, like with politics, your writing, English, and all those subjects? Dyson? Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Like, I think I was really, I, I wanted the world. You know, I wanted mm -hmm. people to owe me things at that age. So I always wanted this this relationship of like uncle mm -hmm. you know so i was never grateful for what he did give me mm -hmm. and he gave me so much man he gave me a belief you know a validation mm -hmm. and understanding of what my platform could be mm -hmm. um and a real understanding of what it meant to be black and educated for you sure. know so those are things that like are very yeah you're, you're 20 you're 19 you're not processing those lessons for sure you're just like can't you post me on your twitter yeah <laughs> can't you get me popping can you call lupe back but yeah i learned so much from him. Do you still talk to him? I need to reach out to him. His yeah. One of his um, assistants was like getting his PhD and he would always kind of check in with me. I got this book coming out. Mm -hmm. You should come in and visit. And I uh, haven't, haven't reached back out. So that's like on my list. Visit my family in Detroit. Yeah. Hit Dyson back. Yeah, he's a good guy. Uncle Dyson, shout out. I um, love you. You also said that um, you're an avid reader. Um, growing up, you read a lot of books. Yeah. Ella Dumas. Oh, Tony man. Morrison. Yes. Um, is there any current authors that you're really into? Because my goal this year is to read 12 books in 12 months, and I need some new books. And I wanted to know if you're reading anything that I should be reading. Um, I would always, I mean, contemporary authors are tough for me. I'd still say Toni Morrison's probably like the most contemporary author I, I am enamored by or with. Um, Richard Wright, I would always recommend. I know he's not new. Mm -hmm. um, and, geez, Devil in a Blue Dress. Uh, can someone help me out with that Devil in a blue dress. Come on. Oh, I'm going to remember it. I will remember it. I will remember it. Right. And then I always just say, read The Alchemist and The Four Agreements. Oh, those those books are, are, you know, my, my whole value system pretty much is derived from those yeah. two books. I reread I started The Alchemist and I was young, so I like, wasn't getting it. And I was frustrated, so I put it down. Right. I think it's time to revisit it. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Um, you had a lot of side hustles. You worked at sneaker stores. You were tutoring up until a couple years ago. Oh, yeah. And then you talked about, like, you did that to reinvest um, into your current career and what it is now. Yeah. Um, as you level up, is there, like, plans to, like, reinvest in your communities? Um, oh, my sweet I, know, I mean, it, it, it's kind of a hard thing to talk about, but, like, Nipsey was doing that. Yep. And so, like, that's kind of at the forefront of every artist, musician of, like, how do I reinvest and level up? people with me Absolutely. so i was just curious like there's not even really like an alternative plan there's not like a concurrent you know building of the ego and building of the community self mm -hmm. it's very intertwined for me you know that's why i deviated from politics to music mm -hmm. so it's the way i see it is i'm hopefully through the music i'm nurturing people you know as mm -hmm. i grow i get older and more self-aware mm -hmm. i used to want to strip my discography but it's sort of like tattoos you know mm -hmm. they're a reflection of where you are at that point in life and I'm, sure. i have to be proud of that so to say that, that's all to say, I, I do want to found a literacy program. You know, I haven't figured out what that looks like, how it looks. I did that in, in eighth grade. Mm -hmm. I made one for the elementary school for mm -hmm. kids with uh, disabilities and, and on the spectrum. And that was really successful Dope. in that little small community. So I'm always looking to see where there's a need mm -hmm. and not just prescribe where my strengths are. 
And on top of that, um, community gardening has always been huge for me. Um, my mom worked at the California Endowment. So like all the grants in California went through her organization and community gardening is just the future. You know, mm -hmm. we have to be able to, to teach kids the whole process of that. You know, the assembly line start to finish to see yeah. the food, yeah, to see what goes into it. Food. Yes, yes. So those two things are really important to me. The mind and the body are, are so intertwined. Dope. Yeah. Um, now let's get to your music. You have uh, an EP coming out soon, Shangri-La. I just got a release date. Oh, uh, when is it? I just got one. Uh, May 31st. May 31st. Shangri-La. You heard it here first. All right. I'm so excited, <laughs> and, guys. And uh, your new song, um, the, the, the single, Breezy. Yes. yes. I read from a, an opinion piece. The lead single from his upcoming is charged with an L.A. energy that's sunny and dreamy, but distinctly restless. Look at that. That's me in a nutshell, man. Yeah, yeah. It's calm on the exterior. There's, there's always something going on up in the, in the dome. For sure, I, I listen to it, and it's on my playlist now. Yes, I love it, you. and I, this encapsulated that single. You think that was? Oh, dude, because like there's, <sighs> it, it has this amazing vibe, but you could tell, the lyrics. There's like something troubling your spirit. Oh of. yes. So. It's that's so cool that you can pick up on that because I think some people don't invest enough to care about yeah. the subtext, but. The existential crisis of first being black mm -hmm. and second being American, because mm -hmm. I think everyone can can deal yeah. with that. That's that's an identity crisis in For itself. Sure. So that dichotomy is is working itself out through the music. For you sure. Know, subconsciously. I also, like maybe I'm wrong, but I got a little like heartbreak in there. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, you know, and that's I think personally, like love for me comes to my craft as well, mm -hmm. and I have been hurt. I have had trust issues with this industry. Mm -hmm. it, it has taught me to sort of cover up my vulnerability a little bit, mm -hmm. which is tough because to be powerful, you have to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And so it's working through that. You know, being myself was tough. Getting a label that supported me through this was was so amazing. Mm -hmm. And there's like, be yourself, you know? Yeah. And that's not always so easy. So for sure. that's cool you picked up on yeah. it, man. Thank you. Cool. Well, thank you for coming through. Thank you for having me. Tate Tucker, May 31st. Check out his EP. Woo, Shangri-La! Keep it breezy. <laughs>